Jonathan Sofa here for Shutter Nutter Nation! And I was able to get my hands on a Nikon D7200 for a few days, and we're going to take a look at this and see how it compares to its older brother, the Nikon D7100. The Nikon D7200 meant to replace the Nikon D7100. So what has changed about this camera? Physically, nothing has changed about the camera. It looks exactly the same with the exception, I guess, of this little doodad on the side, which is the newly included NFC chip, and the badge, of course, that says Nikon D7200. So what else has changed in this camera? Well, everything else that has changed is internal. Uh, I think it has a new sensor. They haven't officially announced that it does, but I think it does, and we'll we'll let you decide a little later uh, as well. Um, it has a much larger buffer than the D7100. The D7100, you could only take six shots off, and it would fill up. Uh, it was six frames per second was the fastest uh, f shots per second you could get off the D7100, and after that filled up, the frame rate would drop. This has been resolved in this camera. Yay! has a new XPeed 4 processor compared to the XPeed 3 processor. It has the NFC chip included in it. ISO range has expanded from the 7100, which had 100 to 6400, and this has 100 to 25,600 with two extended modes as well that only shoot in black and white. Video has kind of been upgraded, kind of... Uh, the 7100 could only shoot 1080i, 60 frames per second. This can shoot 1080p, 60 frames per second, with the caveat that you have to be in 1.3 time crop mode. It has added flat picture control, and the autofocus system has been upgraded to the DX equivalent of, what is it, the 3500 version 2 Mark II autofocus system that has been released in the Nikon D750. I think that's everything. Uh, one other thing, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the D7100, the movie button on the top of the camera could not be reprogrammed for other functions. This camera lets you do that, uh, very similar to the Nikon D750, uh, so you can reprogram it such as um, to control the ISO setting on the camera. Instead of having to take your hand off the lens and reach it around and press the ISO button and use a thumb wheel, very annoying, they resolved that by making you, by allowing you to reprogram that button. So let me know if you can do that on the 7100. I don't remember. So we're going to take a look at some high ISO tests comparing this camera to the 7100. And I'll let you decide what you think about this new sensor and if it's worth upgrading or not. So let's roll that clip now. We are going to be taking a look here at the Nikon D7200, which is on the left-hand side, and the Nikon D7100 on the right-hand side. I'm currently using the Nikon Capture NXD software to view the RAW files of the 7200, since Adobe Camera Raw is not quite updated as of this moment. But we're going to start at ISO 100 and work our way up, so let's just get into this. We're going to start on the left-hand side here. I purposely had a very heavily shadowed area with some pencil erasers in the background. And you can clearly see, well, maybe you can't on YouTube, I don't know. I will have all these files available for download um, in the link in the description, so check that out if you'd like to pixel peep on your own. But I can see a lot more detail in the shadows of the D7100 image. On the top of this camera, definitely more detail in the shadow from the D7100. The ladybug people look pretty happy in their little buggy there. We won't disturb them. And off to the right-hand side, where I also purposely put a very heavy shadow I can see more detail in the D7100 image. And maybe this will change once once Adobe Camera Raw updates for the D7200, but I doubt you're going to see much of a difference. I 
All right, let's keep going. Let's uh, let's go up to ISO 1600. And let's get back over to the left-hand side. Like any crop sensor camera, a little bit of grain is being introduced into the image. That's perfectly normal. Uh, I can also see a little bit of chroma noise coming in from the D7100. Uh, the D7200 looks pretty clean in that regard. But I will say the 7100 is still pulling a little bit more detail out of the shadows. The dynamic range is a little bit better at lower ISOs on the D7100 than the D7200. And I just noticed here that there is a photo site that is not working properly. Oh, there's another one. Well, that doesn't look so great for this brand new camera, but we'll just keep going. Oh, there's three. Very well. Let's get over to the shadow over here. And here is the famous banding that the D7100 is very well known for. And this was one of the issues um, that many people were having with shadows and the D7100, this heavy banding that it ruins the image. And it's starting to show up. What are, what are we at right here? ISO 1600. We already have banding in the shadows on the D7100. I'm happy to report the D7200, no banding as of ISO 1600. So far, so good. The rest of the image looks fairly comparable. All right, let's keep going. ISO 3200. More grain being introduced, perfectly normal. Uh, I would still say at ISO 3200, the non-shadow area of the Nikon D7, the Nikon D7100 is still usable, um, but definitely in the shadow area, uh, the banding is very heavy and unusable in the shadow area. On the D7200, perfectly usable, no banding. Uh, the noise looks very, very well controlled. Not a lot of chroma noise as well either, so you're getting very accurate colors. And if I had to say, it looks like the D7200 is starting to catch up in uh, detail in the shadows. It looks to have a little bit better dynamic range now, starting at around 3200 ISO. So let's keep pumping this up and see where it goes from here. Let's go to 6400. Yeah, and the Nikon D7100 is out of the game. It is very muddy in the shadows, a lot of chroma noise. Uh, the shadows are actually starting to turn more of a, a red magenta color. Uh, the Nikon D7200 is doing very well. And absolutely no banding in the shadows as of ISO 6400. The Nikon D7100, as you can see, has very horrible banding in this this right-hand shadow. Uh, un, un, unusable file. Uh, you really can't do much to fix that banding at, at this point. Um, you just got to throw it out. You can even see the banding across this piano lid here. Uh, but the D7200, no more banding issues. Great job, Nikon. And also, shadow detail looks to be a little bit higher in the D7200. So that kind of looks like a trade-off, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you get better low ISO performance out of the Nikon D7100, but better high ISO performance out of the Nikon D7200. So you're going to have to make that, that choice yourself. What's more important to you, a little bit better high ISO performance or better low ISO, ISO performance? And let's just bump it up to 12,800 just for fun. Yeah, both of them are unusable. But the Nikon D7200 does look better than the 7100. And at, at 12,800, a little bit of banding is starting to show up in the D7200 image. But uh, very well controlled. Uh, 
much much better performance than the, than the 7100 and i have one more image to show you and this is a image taken at iso 100 a quarter of a second and i bumped the exposure up by five stops so we can kind of see what detail is being captured in these shadows just to see what sensor has a higher dynamic range and it's very clear at low iso uh, ISO 100, the D7100 is pulling more detail out of the shadows than the D7200, which I'm a little disappointed by. You'd, you'd think uh, sensor technology should be advancing as far as the dynamic range. But then again, at higher at a higher ISOs, uh, you look, looking about ISO 3200 and above, the 7200 has the advantage. So again, all these files will be available for download uh, from the link in the description. Take a look at yourself. You'll have to use the Capture NXD software to view them as of now, but I'm sure Adobe will have an update very, very soon. So there is just a very, very quick look at some high ISO testing between the 7200 and the 7100. Now keep in mind, this is not the end all be all. This is only one test and I'm sure someone will try to will prove me wrong out on the internet, but you know, take, take these tests as you will. I will provide all the raw files so you can take a look at the files yourself. Um, but as it looks, the 7200 does a lot better at high ISOs than the 7100. The 7100 has that horrible banding in the shadows, which it 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 starts, uh, probably ISO 400 is when you start seeing that banding in the shadows. The D7200, that is gone. Gone like a freight train. That's a song. I won't sing the rest of it. So that's, that's, that's great news. But at lower ISO values, it seems like the 7100 pulls a little bit more detail in. What else have I noticed? Uh, the UI is a lot snappier on here. That's probably the first thing I noticed. It took a couple pictures and just reviewing through the pictures, uh, you press the button to go to the next photo and it's instant. Uh, one complaint I didn't like about the D750 was you press the button and there's a little bit of a lag till it changes pictures. So you can't scroll through your pictures very quickly. Uh, that's one thing that I like that they um, upgraded on this camera, which is probably due to the X-Speed 4 processor a little bit more processing power. You cannot shoot six frames per second if you have it set at 14-bit RAW files. Uh, you can only shoot at five frames per second. So you have to put that down to 12-bit in order to get the six frames per second. Um, what else? What else was I going to say? Can't think of it right now. So we are going to move on to the buffer size. I will compare this with the D750. And yeah, it's interesting what what you find out. So here are a few clips of filling the buffer up of both the D750 and the D7200. I won't do the 7100 because we all know it sucks. So we'll just get that one.
There you have it. The buffer depth has increased greatly. I counted 29 shots. That was at 6 frames per second, 12-bit RAW mode. And just a comparison, the D750 at 14-bit RAW file selection with 6.5 frames per second only got 14 frames in there. So it seems that it might even have a little bit larger buffer size than the D750, which is disappointing to say the least but an improvement over the D7100. I'm, I mean, a disappointment for the D750, because that should have a larger buffer depth than the D7200, but it doesn't. So the three main takeaways from the D7200. Better image processor, XPD4, compared to XPD3. Uh, the image sensor is new. Better high ISO performance, but from my tests, low ISO performance is not as good. So I, I'm going to wait and see in, uh, until other people start putting up their reviews to see if they come to the same conclusion. Uh, hopefully they do. If they don't, I don't know. And the last takeaway was improved autofocus in low light. I didn't do any tests with that. I didn't really notice that much of a difference from the previous version. And that's everything, ladies and gentlemen. The Nikon D7200 a worthwhile upgrade for you D7100 users only if that banding in the shadows at high ISOs was bothering you too much, then it might be a worthwhile upgrade. Otherwise, a horse apiece. A horse apiece. So, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, remember to get it up. Keep it up. It's Jonathan Sofa for Shutter Nutter Nation. We'll see you next time.